طيب بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد so the hadith of today, the first hadith, the first hadith from the collection of 40 hadith from Imam al-Nawi. An Amir al-Mu'mineen, Abi Hafs, Umar ibn al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qal, on the authority of the leader of the believers, Abu Hafs, Umar, the son of al-Khattab, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who said, Sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, innama al-a'malu bin niyat. I heard, I heard the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu wasalam say, Indeed, actions are but by their intentions. وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئٍ مَا نَوَى And indeed, for every single person is what he intended. فَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ So he whose hijrah, migration, is for Allah and his messenger, then his hijrah is for Allah and his messenger. وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لِدُنْيَا يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِحُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِ And as for he whose hijrah, whose migration, is for the dunya, in order to acquire it, or a woman to marry, then his hijrah, his migration, is for whatever he migrated for. Rawahu Imam Al Muhaddithin Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Ibrahim ibn Al Mughira ibn Bardizbah al Bukhari. This is the name of one of the collectors of hadith, commonly known as Imam al Bukhari. وأبو الحسين مسلم بن الحجاج بن مسلم القشيري النيسابوري. This is the name of another Imam, the one that is commonly referred to as Imam Muslim. He is another collector of this hadith. في صحيح في صحيحهما اللذين هما أصح الكتب المصنفة. They collected these two ahadith in the Sahih, so they had collections of ahadith. One of the collections that both of the two muhaddithun authored were the sahihs, you could, you could say, for, for a, to be brief. Imam al-Bukhari, he has a collection that we call the sahih, meaning all the ahadith that he considers to be sahih in that collection. Imam Muslim, he has another collection of ahadith called the sahih. All the ahadith according to him and his conditions that he deems to be sahih are in that collection. So this hadith of Umar ibn al-Khattab anhu has been collected in these two collections, these two collections of ahadith that are the most, most authentic books ever authored. طيب, so Shaykh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad, his explanation to this hadith can be divided into nine parts. The last part, as we've mentioned before, is a summary of the benefits that are extracted from the hadith. So this hadith here, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ Indeed, actions are by their intentions. This hadith here is in reference to, no doubt we know that actions, for an action to occur, it has to have an intention behind it. For an action to be called an action, as is commonly understood, the person has to have intended it in the first place. Otherwise, as Sheikh Abdul Rahman as Sa'di, he says in his ex explanation of this hadith in, uh, in Umdat al Ahkam, otherwise, if it's the case that an action occurs without intending it, you move your hand without actually intending to move your hand. You look around, you look somewhere without intending to look. Then that isn't really called an amal. It's not really called an action. 
that there is similar to a, a sleeping person or a person that is insane, crazy, lost his sanity. When a sleeping person or an insane person acts, he's not doing it willfully, he's not doing it with a conscious, he's not doing it with a niya, he's not doing it with a with an intention. When a sleeping person turns around, it's not the case that he intended to turn around. When my son sometimes is lying next to me after I've put him to sleep. He turns around and he whacks me with his hand. It's not the case that he intended to hit me. That wasn't his intention, but it's an action of a sleeping person or vice versa. It's the intention of a, or it's the action of a sleeping person. An action that occurs without niya. So therefore that is something that we all, we, we all understand. But what this hadith is referring to is the niya as far as the manwi, يعني, as far as the manwi is concerned, the, the thing that is intended is concerned, the action is concerned. The intention concerning the actual action that you do. And likewise, the intention for the manwi lahu, for the one that you're doing the action. This hadith here, it's bahth, it's discussion, it is about what? When it's saying niya, that is in reference to the action itself, what is the intent behind the action that you did? What is the intent behind the action that was done? And likewise, the one for whom you did the action, what was the, or who was it in, who was the action for? Again, the niya in this bahthiya, in this topic here, in this discussion here, it's in reference to two things. Niya, intention concerning the action, what was I actually intending? What was my intent in terms of this action? And then we'll, via uh, the sharh of this hadith, the explanation of this hadith, we'll have some more elaboration upon what this point is in reference to. What was my niya concerning the action? That's one thing. Number two, who was I doing the action for? So that is the bath of this hadith. That is the topic that this hadith uh, is in reference to. Tayyib, so now as far as Shaykh Abdul Muhsin al Abbad's sharh is concerned. The first part. The first part is a, a very brief discussion or a brief explanation concerning the Isnad, the chain of narration. So Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Abad he says, Akhrajahu al Bukhari wa Muslim, wa Ashab al Sunan, wa Ghayruhum. This hadith has been collected by Imam al Bukhari, Imam Muslim, and Ashab al Sunan. The collectors of the Sunan. When this term is used, when, when we say Bukhari, we know who that is in reference to. When we say Muslim, we know what that is in reference to. When this term is used, the authors of the Sunan, the compilers of the Sunan, what is this term in reference to? For the four books of Sunan, who are the authors? Mm. Anybody? Raise your hand. Anybody besides Adam, who was attending Abu Mu'ad's lessons on Mustalah al Hadith? Huh? Just name me one, it doesn't have to be in order. An Nasai, Tayyib, Sheikh Ismail, Abu Dawood, Fadr Yaqi. Ibn Majah, At-Tirmidhi, Tayyip. So when we say Ashab al-Sunan, the authors of the four, sun, the authors of the Sunan, that is in reference to the authorships, the specific authorships of these four Imams. And likewise, others besides these six scholars of Hadith, collectors of Hadith, Bukhari, Muslim, and the Ashab al-Sunan, other collectors of Hadith have also collected this Hadith. وقد تفرد بروايته عن عمر علقمه ابن وقاص الليثي 
وتفرد به عنه محمد بن ابراهيم التيمي وتفرد عنه يحيى بن سعيد الانصاري ثم كثر الاخذون عنه فهو من غرائب صحيح البخاري so this hadith only umar as far as the companions are concerned the tabaqah of the companions the level of the companions only umar radiyallahu ta'ala anhu is reported in, a, in, a, in an authentic narration so i've heard this from the messenger of allah alayhi salatu wasalam and then from umar it is only alqamah ibn waqas al-layfi that heard it from umar and then from alqamah ibn waqas al-layfi there is only muhammad ibn ibrahim al-taymi that heard it from him and then muhammad ibn ibrahim al-taymi it is only yahya ibn sa'id al-ansari that heard it from him nobody else only him after yahya ibn sa'id al-ansari many many multiple people multiple narrators ended up narrating it from him when a narration has only been narrated by one person anywhere in the chain of narration if it's at the level of the companion or from those that narrate from the companion or the level after it or the level after it up until it reaches Imam Bukhari Imam Muslim if anywhere in that level in the levels of that chain of narration there's only one narrator what do you call that type of narration there is a term that the ulama of hadith give to a narration where at least once within the chain of narration there is just one narrator more specifically because khabar al-ahad is of different types kharib ahsan so this hadith here and a hadith similar to it they are called a hadith yani they are the gharaib a hadith that is gharib it doesn't mean that it's inauthentic it's got it doesn't mean that it's inauthentic it's just a classification as far as the number of narrators that are found at uh, any given level of the chain of narration but the point is that this hadith is classified as a gharib hadith and this hadith that is a gharib hadith a hadith that has somewhere within its chain of narration just one narrator narrating it from his sheikh this hadith that is gharib is the very first hadith that Imam al-Bukhari began his book Sahih al-Bukhari with. First hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari is this hadith. إِنَّمَ الْأَعْمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ And likewise, the last hadith also in Sahih al-Bukhari is a gharib hadith. Just like this is a hadith in gharib, then likewise, the last hadith in Imam al-Bukhari is a sahih, is a hadith that is gharib, and that is a hadith of Abi Huraira, kalimatani, habibatani, ila rahmani akmil, complete, taqilatani, khafifatani, ala lisani, taqilatani, fil mizani, subhanallah wa bihamdi, subhanallah al azim So this hadith, the hadith, uh, the translation of which is two statements. Kalimatani, habibatani ila rahman Two statements, beloved to the ever merciful. Light upon the tongue, heavy upon the scales. What are those two statements? Subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. If you say this statement, it's easy to say it on the tongue. But it's going to be heavy if you say it sincerely for the sake of Allah on your scales, on your al-qiyamah. So this hadith here is likewise a hadith that is gharib. And it is at the end of Imam al-Bukhari, it's sahih. So that was a brief discussion that Shaykh Abdul Muhsin al-Abad, he goes over uh, as, uh, concerning the chain of narration and the hadith and the collection of the hadith. And that's the first part of Shaykh Abdul Muhsin al-Abad's explanation. Second part. The second part of Shaykh Abdul Muhsin al-Abad's explanation to this noble hadith is in reference to the great amount of importance that the scholars have given to this hadith 
in their authorships, in the books that they've written, in the treaties that they've written, in the collections that they've compiled. The second part of Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Abbas' explanation is in relation to the great amount of importance that the ulama have given to this hadith whenever they have written a book or compiled a book. So concerning this, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Abbad, he says that Imam al nawi obviously starts his collection of 40 hadith with this hadith. Likewise, a, a, a um, great amount of scholars have begun their books with this hadith. And now Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Abbad, he gives us some examples of those scholars <coughs> who have authored books commencing with this hadith, beginning with this hadith. From them is, who can give me an example? Give me an example of one scholar besides Imam al nawawi that begun his book with this hadith, إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ One scholar. Put your hand up if you can think of one scholar that has written a book or compiled a book. Raise your hand if you know the answer. I just want to know who's been paying attention so far. Not to put anybody else on the spot. Doesn't mean that if your hand hasn't been raised, that you haven't been paying attention. But just to see who's, who knows. Tfadal ya akhi. Which other scholar began his book with this hadith besides Imam al nawawi Imam al-Bukhari, Hassan, Jazakallah khair. Obviously, we mentioned a few minutes ago, Imam al-Bukhari began his book with this hadith. Okay? So Imam al-Bukhari in his book, in his Sahih, begins with this hadith. Likewise, Abdul Ghani al-Maqdisi, he authored, he authored his book, Umdat al-Ahkam. Umdat al-Ahkam, with this book, Umdat al-Ahkam, it's like the book that you study before Bulugh al-Maram. He, wa rahmatullah. He began this, he began his collection with this hadith. Uh, likewise, Imam al baghawi his two books, Masabih al-Sunnah, and his other book, Sharh al-Sunnah. He began them, he began those two collections with these two ahadith. Likewise, Imam al sayuti his book, Al-Jami' al-Saghir, Al-Jami' al-Saghir, he began it with this hadith. And likewise, Imam al nawi himself, in another book of his, a book that is called Al Majmu' fi Sharh al Muhadhab, a book which is an explanation of uh, Shafi'i fiqh. In that book, Imam al Nawi has a section entitled Fasl fi al Ikhlas wa Sidq wa Ihbar al Niyyah fi Jami' al A'mal al Barizah wa al Khafiyah section concerning having sincerity having truthfulness being conscious of one's intention in all of your acts in outward acts and inward acts so he has this title in this book of his after he writes this title he then quotes three ayat from the Quran. And then what which hadith does he quote? He quotes this hadith here, Innam al A'mal bin Niyat. And then after that, Imam al Nawi he said, Hadithun Sahihun Muttafaqun ala sihatihi. This is a hadith. And its authenticity has been agreed upon. Yani there is consensus upon the fact that this is a hadith that is sahih. وَمُجْمَعٌ عَلَىٰ عِذَ مَوْقِعِهِ وَجَلَالَتِهِ Likewise, consensus. Every, all the scholars, they are united upon the fact of this hadith having a great station. Having a great station and nobility in our deen. And then Imam al nawi he said, وَهُوَ إِحْدَى, وهو إحدى قَوَاعِدِ الْإِيمَانِ وَأَوَّلُ دَعَائِمِهِ this hadith here, this hadith that so many of you have memorized, some of you read it today, 
This hadith here that children have memorized. This hadith here, it is one of the foundations of Iman. It is one of the supports of Iman. It is one of the most emphatic pillars of Iman. The most emphasized pillars, pillar of Iman. And now Imam an nawawi quotes a statement of Imam al-Shafi'i. Imam al-Shafi'i, he has a famous statement concerning this hadith. What does Imam al-Shafi'i say? Imam al-Shafi'i, he said, يَدْخُلُ هَذَا الْحَدِيثِ فِي سَبْعِينَ بَابًا مِنَ الْفِقْهِ this hadith, Imam Shafi'i said, this hadith enters upon 70 different chapters of fiqh. 70 different chapters of fiqh. Meaning, Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Badr, Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Badr, he is the son of the author of uh, this commentary. Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Badr, he's a son of Sheikh Abdul Mahsin Abbad. Sheikh Abdul Razak Al Badr, in commentary or in, يعني, in commenting upon this statement of Imam al Shafi'i, he said most likely what Imam al Shafi'i is trying to say here is trying to indicate by using the number 70. This hadith uh, enters into 70 different chapters of fiqh. يعني, al Kathar. He's trying to indicate how. Lend, how, uh, how, uh, how this hadith enters, in, enters into so many different fields of fiqh. So many different fields and chapters of fiqh. Why? Because no doubt this hadith is about what? Essentially ikhlas, sincerity. And sincerity is required in every single act of worship. Every single act of worship, it is, an, it is a... Uh, a requirement for that to be ikhlas in it, in it, for it to be accepted. So therefore, Shaykh Abdul Razak al-Badr, he said in commentary upon this statement of Imam al-Shafi'i, that this hadith enters into 70 different chapters of fiqh, i.e. what Imam al-Shafi'i is trying to indicate, that this hadith enters into so many, look how many fields of fiqh this hadith enters into. Then Imam al he he quotes another statement of Imam al-Shafi'i, and that is what? Uh, this hadith is a thuluthul ilm, thuluthul ilm, a third of knowledge. And likewise, others besides Imam al Shafi'i have made a similar statement. Then Imam al Nawi he says, Wahua ahadul ahadith, alati alayha madarul islam, wakadukhtulifa fi uddiha, fakila thalatha, wakila arba'a. So this hadith, actions are only by intentions. This hadith, it is the hadith that Islam, it's one of those ahadith that Islam revolves around. How many are those ahadith that Islam revolves around? Imam al he said, some have said, they've, they've tried to count how many are those ahadith that Islam revolves around. And this goes back to the ijtihad of that scholar, ijtihad of that researcher. So some, based upon the ijtihad, have said it goes back to one hadith. Some have said it goes back to two. Some say it goes back to three, some to four. So if it is that, but this hadith Whatever that number may be, whatever the number of a hadith that Islam revolves around be, whether it's one or two or three or four, regardless of the number of the a hadith that Islam revolves around, this hadith for definite is amongst them. So if it's the case that Islam it revolves around two a hadith, then this is half of it. If it is the case, that a scholar says, based upon my research, Islam revolves around three ahadith, then this hadith is a, a third of it. 
If a scholar says based upon his research or based upon his definition that Islam revolves around four hadith, then this hadith is a quarter of it. Imam al he then says, وَقَدْ جَمَعْتُهَا كُلَّهَا فِي جُزْءِ الْأَرْبَعِينَ فَبَلَغَتْ أَرْبَعِينَ حَدِيثٍ لا يستغني متدين متدين عن معرفتها لأنها كلها صحيحة جامعة قواعد الإسلام في الأصول والفروع والزهد والآداب ومكارم الأخلاق وغير ذلك. So now Imam al he says that he now has compiled those ahadith concerning which it has been said Islam revolves around this hadith. Those ahadith about which it may have been said this hadith is a third of knowledge, half of knowledge, and so on and so forth. These type of ahadith, I have gathered them together and they have reached 40 ahadith. Have they actually reached 40 ahadith exactly? No, how many ahadith? 42. But as is the custom amongst the ulama, that they round it off. So uh, these ahadith have reached 40 ahadith in number and no mutadayyin. No religious person, or as we say in our uh, in common language, any practicing person. No relig religious person is, no mutadayyin, no religious person, is free of having any need of knowing about these ahadith. Meaning every single person that calls himself mutadayyin, practicing, religious, devout, and so on and so forth, no religious person is 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 and every single religious person needs to have some type of awareness about these hadith understanding of these hadith because all of them are uh, because all of them are, uh, are are authentic and all of them they are regarding they collect together they are collective concerning the principles of the religion the beliefs of the religion the furu' the subsidiary matters of the religion. These ahadith, among them are ahadith that speak about abstention from the dunya, speak about mannerisms, speak about good character, and so on and so forth. وَإِنَّمَا بَدَأْتُ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَأَسِّيًا بِأَئِمَّتِنَا وَمُتَقَدِّمِ أَسْلَافِنَا مِنَ الْعُلَمَاءِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى عَنْهُمْ He says Imam al -Nawi, that the reason why I've begun with this hadith is why following the footsteps of the scholars that came before me the imams of this deen that came before me وَقَدْ إِبْتَدَأَ بِهِ إِمَامُ أَهْلِ الْحَدِيثِ بِلَا مُدَافَعَهُ أَبُوْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ أَلْبُخَارِي صَحِيحَهُ وَنَقَلَ جَمَاعَةٌ أَنَّ السَّلَفْ كَانَ كَانُوا يَسْتَحِبُّونَ إِفْتِتَاحَ الْكُتُبِ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ تَنْبِيهًا لِلطَّالِبْ عَلَى تَصْحِيحِ النِّيَّة وإرادته وجه الله عز وجه الله تعالى بجميع أعماله البارزة والخفية. So again, he mentions the fact that we have already come to know that the Imam of the people of Hadith, the Imam of the people of Hadith, without exaggeration, Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Ismail al Bukhari, he begun his collection with this Hadith. And likewise, it has been reported from a great amount of people that the Salaf, those that came before him, used to love beginning their books with this hadith. Why? To alert the seeker of knowledge about rectifying his intention and making sure that he intends by it nothing other than the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He intends by his actions, inward and outward, nothing other than the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he makes a, and then he cites a, a statement of Imam Abu Sa'id Abd rahman ibn Mahdi. Imam Abu Sa'id Abd rahman ibn Mahdi, who said, لَوْ صَنَّفْتُ كِتَابًا بَدَأْتُ فِي أَوَّلِ كُلِّ بَابٍ مِنْهُ بِهَذَا الْحَدِيثِ He said, if I was to author a book, I would begin every single chapter with this hadith. And likewise, this Imam, he said, Man arada an yusannifa kitab, man arada an yusannifa kitaban, fal yabda bihadha al hadith, 
whoever wants to author a book, then let him begin with this hadith. And then Imam Annawi he cites another statement. A statement from Imam Abu Suleiman Hamad ibn Muhammad ibn Ibrahim ibn al Khattab al Khattabi, who said in his, in his book Al Ma'alim, كان المتقدمون من شيوخنا يستحبون تقديم حديث الأعمال بالنيات أمام كل شيء ينشأ ويبتدأ من أمور الدين لعموم الحاجة إليه في جميع أنواعها This Imam he said that our shuyukh our teachers that came before us used to love giving precedence to this hadith before anything and everything from the affairs within which the affairs of the deen is begun with. Those that came before us from the shuyukh used to love giving precedence to this hadith before every single thing within which the affairs of the deen were begun with. Why? Because of the absolute need of this hadith, i.e. the content of this hadith, in all of those affairs of the deen. And then he makes a mention, or then Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Abbad, in his conclusion to the second part of this explanation, he makes a mention of Ibn Rajab al Hanbali. And what is good about Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Abbad's explanation? As we have, uh, as we came to know in the previous lesson, in the previous lesson, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Abbad he mentioned that he is taking his commentary to forty hadith of Imam Nawi from certain books, from certain scholars, and from among them was Ibn Rajab al Hanbali. And, and what is significant about Ibn Rajab al Hanbali and this book here, the forty hadith of Imam Nawi? What's the connection? What's so significant? Uh, Muhammad. Yeah, so uh, Imam Ibn Rajab al Hanbali, he also added eight to the collection of Imam and know he's 42, but something else. The fact that Imam Ibn Rajab authored a, an explanation to it. And it's a very, very detailed explanation. A very, very comprehensive explanation. Not really suitable for the beginner. However, Shaykh Abdul Muhsin Abad, what he has done here, he's taken some of those nice benefits, important benefits from Ibn Rajab's explanation, those that are suitable for us, and brought them here. So he mentioned the statements of Ibn Rajab al Hanbali, rahimahullah ta'ala, within which he says that Imam al Bukhari, in his Sahih, he places this hadith at the beginning. Imam al-Bukhari, in his Sahih, places this hadith, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالُ niyat in the beginning of his book, in the beginning of his Sahih, as though indicating by way of that, as though it's a khutbah, maqam al-khutbati lahu. Aqamahu maqam al-khutbati lahu. He placed it in the place where a khutbah would be, would be, where the introduction to a book would be where the preface to a book would be. إِشَارَةً مِنْهُ إِلَىٰ أَنَّا كُلَّ عَمَلٍ لَا يُرَادُ بِهِ وَجْهَ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ بَاطِلٍ لَا ثَمَرَةَ لَهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا وَلَا فِي الْآخِرَةِ Imam al-Bukhari puts this hadith at the beginning of his book where usually somebody writes an introduction as an indication, indicating by way of that that any action and every action that you do, that I do, by which Allah's face is not intended, that action is batil. That action is invalid. That action is fruitless, in vain. لا ثمرة له في الدنيا ولا في الآخرة. There is no fruit to it in this life, nor in the afterlife. So that is Shaykh Abd al-Muhsin al-Abbad's second part to the explanation. How many parts does Shaykh Abd al-Muhsin al-Abbad's explanation consist of? 
تفضل يا اخي يس 50 يس 50 احاديث امام ابن رجب كولكتد ان هيز جامع العلوم والحكم يعني از فيري جود امام امام ابن رجب كولكتد 50 احاديث ان هيز ان هيز متممات 40 النووي The other question. What was my question again? How many parts? How many parts? Does Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al Abad divide his explanation to this hadith? Put your hand up. Put your hand up if you know. Put your hand up if you know. Fadl ya akhi. Ahsan tbarak Allah fiik. Nine nine parts to the explanation of this hadith. So that's two explan two parts that we've done. How much uh, time have we spent so far? 40 minutes. Third party Juan is nice, it's very tasty. But as we said last week, uh, it's better to have some knowledge but you retain it than lots of knowledge but then there's too much and you end up forgetting it. Are you okay with that? Are you okay with that? Yes, because obviously there's sisters waiting as well, people online as well, they may, they may have a schedule. So we agreed last week. 40, 45 minutes, I'm scared that perhaps if I start off with the third part again, again it might take, you know, 20 minutes or so. Even though it should only take 5, 10 minutes, but you know what I'm like. So what we'll do here, Ikhwan, is we'll suffice with this. Next week, as I said before the lesson commences, before we go live, we'll ask the brothers to read this hadith again. Those brothers that didn't read it today. Okay? So, Abu Harith Ismail will, will remind me which brothers read it this week and then next week, inshallah ta'ala, Idris, look at a smile on his face, he won't have to read it next week. However, those brothers that did read to me, إِنَّمَا الْأَعْمَالِ بِالنِّيَةِ This hadith today, from memory, then your homework is to memorize the next hadith, the long hadith of Jibreel, يعني the hadith that is commonly known and commonly referred to as the hadith of Jibreel, to read that. But you don't have to read the whole of it. That's going to take too long. But parts of it. I might get a brother to read one part, stop him after a few seconds, and get another brother to complete, complete, يعني that, فَقْرَ that, Paragraph of the hadith and so on and so forth. Okay, so this hadith, the second hadith of Imam al Nawi, its re its reading between us from memory is probably going to continue for a few weeks, maybe maybe three, four weeks, something like this. Okay, so next week again to to reiterate, those brothers that did not read aloud from memory had the hadith in al amal bin niyat. Next week, I'll, I will request those that want to, those that volunteer, to read. I'm not going to put pressure on anybody. Next week, huh? No? Okay. Khalas, I'll, I'll listen to you in a minute. Huh? And, uh, and those brothers that did read the hadith of Inna al-A'mal bin Niyat today, then for them, their homework is to memorize the next hadith, and I'll get them to read the next hadith uh, next week. So I believe that is it for tonight. Until next week, Wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.